Um, my question is because in all the Lord of the Rings movies, you've kind of focused a lot on using um, prosthetics and motion capture and models of the scenes, and I was I really appreciate that, and I was wondering if that posed any challenge to the cast and crew, like if there was any difficulties acting in the prosthetics. I know, especially for the dwarves and the the Hobbit feet. <laughs> oh yeah, what are the, what are the hob- I always wonder like what the Hobbit feet feel like to like put on and then like pounce around it. Uh, they're, they're good. Uh, for the first few days, it's a little bit like a fledgling duck, you know, just <laughs> finding finding your flippers. Uh, but after that, they're surprisingly easy. Yeah, they're kind of uh, you can forget that and just carry on with the the scene and playing the character. But um, whenever I was he having a hard day amazing. or a tiring day, where I had a bunch of other people just to look at and know that I was having a relatively easy time of it physically because everyone in huge prosthetics and big uh, costume rigs uh, were being far more um, heroic than I was. So maybe Richard should uh, talk about that. Yeah, we we went through quite an evolution with the the look for for Thorin and of course all all of the dwarves who are kind of very clearly defined by their features. Working in a prosthetic like that is was one of the biggest challenges because you really have to work your face harder to you know portray what you're trying to express inside. And on day one, I really didn't think that I was going to make it anywhere close to two or three weeks into the shoot. Um, but by the end of the the journey, it's it, I, I couldn't work without it, and I didn't recognise you know the person uh, underneath it. But, um, but managing the heat and the, the stench of, of sweaty dwarf was uh, <laughs> a challenge in itself. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> what is your, that lady loves you. Uh, what is your question? Hi, hello. I, I love you guys. I came all the way from Brazil just because of you. Just because of you. I spent all my money on this trip, but it, it was worth it. <laughs> And before I make my question, Ian, I'm, I'm your biggest fan. I love Gandalf, Magneto. You, you are the greatest. I have a simple gift for you from Brazil. Sorry. Okay. Oh, make sure I get that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Signed by Anderson Silva is important for me, and I would like to give it to you. Oh wow! So my, my question is for Peter. I, I I gotta know this. Will you make a movie about Silmarillion? I, I think the chances of me living till I'm 110 are very remote. <laughs> um, the, the Silmarillion is, uh, is, is totally owned by the Tolkien estate. Um, it's not owned by Warners or MGM like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings are. So, I um, mean, I don't think the Tolkien estate like these movies at all. So, um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't imagine that the Silmarillion is going to go anywhere for quite a long time. Right. Sorry, Brazil. Thank you, you guys are awesome. Conky Kong is awesome. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you for coming. Woo! I kind of can't believe I'm up here right now, but uh, <laughs> I just my question is for Martin. But first, I just wanted to say, Sir Ian McKellen, I've grown up with your acting, Gandalf, Magneto, whatever, and it's just. Your performances have always been very, very special to me, so thank you for that. Um, my question for Martin, though, is were you, like, intimidated or maybe under pressure because you were joining such an ambitious project that's already been established with so many other actors and people who'd worked on the previous films? Um, in all honesty, uh, and it might sound a bit disingenuous to say, but I, I, I honestly didn't feel a huge amount of pressure. I certainly didn't feel intimidated. Um, once I'd met uh, Peter, Fran and Phil, I felt relaxed with them. I felt they were recognisable human beings. They weren't, um, they weren't trying to impress me. They weren't, trying to, they weren't trying to do that stuff to me, which sometimes people can do, which is like, do you realise you know, how lucky you are kind of thing? They weren't doing that to me. They, were, they just wanted me to be in the film, and that really made me want to be in the film. Um, and, and obviously you can't really take intimidation or, or pressure to work with you, you know, because you won't do your best work and you won't do your best playing, which is an actor's job. 
Um, so I don't, you know, when you're doing scenes and when you're just going to work day to day, you're not thinking about this. I mean, you'd go mad if you were thinking about how's Comic Con going to react to the way I choose to move that bottle or whatever. You know, it's it's, um, it's very it's very remote. You know, when you're actually doing the work, and and it's a it's a friendly place to work as well. You know, it's 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 kind of it's its own little world, uh, Wellington. Yay, Wellington! And it, go Wellington! <laughs> and, and, it, and it feels it feels like a sort of special little place where these films are made, where you know you're, you, you're, your only job is just to go along and, and enjoy it and do as do as best you can. I, I can honestly say I wasn't. I mean, I, I had to find my way into it. It's not like I just hit the ground running and there was Bilbo. I had to find my way. And between me and Pete, we negotiated, and you know he usually won. Uh -huh. but, um, <laughs> but, um, but I, no, I never, I never felt intimidated by it at all. Thank God, you know, because it, it's just meant that I, I was able to hopefully do my job. You know. I mean, <clears throat> the footage as well was so, I mean, it's incredible, but it has these amazingly emotional moments. And that's, I think, at the heart of what Peter does in his storytelling and what Philippa and Fran write, and to see that presence in this footage. Because I'm so distant from this, truly. I, I really went to New Zealand for a month last year to do a bit of, of work, but... It's, it's beautiful. I was made to feel emotional watching that footage. And to see it back. Well, where shall I start? Um, I was only supposed to be coming back for two weeks to, um, to uh, play Gollum again, which uh, I was very much looking forward to, of course. Um, and, um, and then about a month before I was about to come down to New Zealand, uh, I get a, an email from Fran who says, uh, Andy, I know you probably got something on, but Pete would like you to come to write the second unit, and uh, so would you mind coming down for a year and a half? Uh, <laughs> time? Now it's not unusual to do that sort of thing in, in, in this company, and of course, uh, once I picked myself up off the floor, um, I was uh, I was on that plane. Of course, I mean, it was a remarkable and extraordinary experience for two counts. One, one obviously working with Martin, who I've wanted to work with for a long time, and to, to get the chance to play opposite him um, for that. That scene, which was a, which was a great experience, and one of the, and was the first thing to be shot in the movie. Actually, um, we spent we spent two weeks uh, shooting the entire scene um, a number of times. Pete wanted to, to let it feel like um, a, a theatre piece where we could really really play play off each other, and Marty could find the character of Bilbo. And it was a really really amazing way of working, and um, and it was it was terrific. And then and then I. You know, began the process of of, um, of jumping into the director's chair, putting on the 3D glasses, getting to grips with 48 frames a second, a crew of 160 people, cranes, technocranes, a schedule, dwarves, dwarf doubles, scale doubles, stunt doubles, um, a, 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 sh a schedule that kept changing every two uh, two minutes, and and it was it was a, a huge film education for me, and and enabled by by you know, the greatest mentor possible. Peter's been an immense part, immense part of my life for the last 12 years, and Fran and Philippa, they've given me such incredible opportunities, and I will eternally be grateful to them. They've honestly made a massive, massive difference, and to be entrusted with that, that position, um, was, was a, a dream to behold. So, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh. Would you, um... Just do the voice, right? Oh, yes! I'm sorry, I don't mean to be. For fuck's sake, do I have to No, I'm sorry, you said. You said you weren't gonna hurl yourself, you said it! But you did it in front of 6,500 fucking people, what are you gonna do, precious? Woo!